So Neil, there has been a lot of publicity recently about the Mother and Baby Homes Commission and calls that members of the commission appear before an Oireachtas committee. Can you tell us something about the legal context to this? Uh, yes, Kate, thanks. Um, the first thing to note, I suppose, in terms of context here is that uh, this commission was a commission set up under the uh, Commission Investigation Act of 2014. Um, so I suppose without necessarily going to the merits and demerits of the particular issues in this case, uh, it is important to look at the context and so that people can make up their own minds then having, having considered um, the particular legal kind of parameters of this. But commissions um, are creatures that are established by the government under the 2014 Act, um, and that's done by order uh, on the proposal of a particular minister. So if a particular minister considers that there's a matter of significant public concern that needs to be investigated into, uh, that minister can propose to the government that they set up a commission investigation. And once the Minister for Finance consents to this, um, a commission will be set up and um, it will be conducted independently and will independently produce uh, its own, to use that word again, independent report on the fruits of investigation. Um, the order setting up a commission is then drafted in the form of a statutory instrument. Um, so I mentioned the fact that it's a minister's proposal consented to by the Minister for Finance uh, and then made by the government. But uh, the Oireachtas as a whole is then involved because the order is drafted in the form of a draft statutory instrument, which sets out all the matters of concern to be investigated into and um, the terms of reference of the committee and uh, the methodology, if any, uh, that is to be pursued by it. And just um, in passing, I note that in the case of the Mother and Baby Homes Commission, uh, the order did include the setting up of the confidential committee the, about which there's been a lot of, I suppose, criticism in terms of um, procedure and, and output. But I suppose the important point as well, um, by way of context here, is that the whole package, in other words, the draft order setting out all of those things, is put before both houses of the Oireachtas um, and they must both resolve to approve it before um, the order setting up the commission is made. So the whole of the Oireachtas basically is behind the entire package um, before an order is made and the commission is set up. Okay, th thanks Neil. And are there other types of processes that can be chosen to inquire into matters of significant public importance? Uh, yeah, there are various options available, I suppose, um, you know, you can set up ad hoc inquiries um, that are non-statutory uh, and I suppose the one that people are most familiar with as well are the uh, tribunals of inquiry. Um, but I suppose commissions of investigation were uh, set up by means of the 2014 Act in part because um, there are disadvantages attaching to both those sorts of um, uh, process and commissions are seen as, as more efficient and cost effective um, and maybe a nice middle ground that produces something independent uh, and of good quality um, but nevertheless has some consequent limitations because as I say it's not a tribunal inquiry it's not an ad hoc uh, non-statutory inquiry um, but that's how they were designed by statute for good or ill um, and of course they're not only constrained by the the nature of them as ordained by statute, but also by their particular terms of reference, their particular procedures and methodologies, um, as were, I suppose, set in stone by the Oireachtas when uh, it would have resolved to establish um, a particular commission. Thanks, Thanks Neil. And in terms of um, accountability for commissions, how does that actually work in practice? Well, in terms of accountability, um, I suppose commissions are stated to be independent. This is in the legislation specifically provided for. They're to be independent in the performance of their functions, I suppose, in the same way that the judges are independent in the performance of their functions. Uh, and, and we don't go about asking them to account for particular judgments that they, um, that they deliver. So uh, I suppose one thing that we've done, again, for good or ill by means of statute, is we've provided for a creature that is to be independent in the performance of its functions, that's to deliver a report at the end of the day, independently arrived at. Um, and once the report is delivered to the relevant minister, the commission stands dissolved. 
Um, so it ceases to exist, which I suppose is another aspect of this. There, there is no longer a commission and the members are, in, in the case of Mother Baby Homes Commission, are members of a, a former uh, commission investigation. Um, so in any case, for both houses of the Oireachtas resolve to set up the commission, they do so on the basis of the commission being independent, reporting independently, and then being dissolved. And they also do so on the basis that they've designed the remit architecture and methodology uh, of the particular commission, and in this case, the Mother and Baby Homes Commission. So therefore, I suppose in principle, it would seem problematic in any individual case, or generally, uh, to seek to question a commission or commission members on that which has been assigned to them by statute and by the establishment order, as well as by resolution of the Arachnas, uh, to carry out independently. And I suppose it might also deter persons from becoming involved in future commissions as members um, if they were to be concerned that any inroad might be made um, into their independence and into their carrying out of their functions independently um, by calls to account for what they've done or how they've done it. Mm. Um, and then in terms of Oireachtas committees, can you tell us something about the other aspect to this, which is that involving Oireachtas committees and, call for, and calls for witness attendances at those? Yes, as you say, I mean, on the one hand, we had, you know, the legal aspect of commissions of investigation and their particular incidents and attributes and rights and obligations. On the other hand, you know, in, in the case of the mother and baby homes, um, publicity and, and, and issues that you mentioned at the, at the outset, um, the other aspect is Arachnus committees. You know, what are they? Uh, what can they do? Um, and when they call for witnesses to attend and so on. Um, I mean, I suppose the general point is that persons can be invited to appear before uh, committees of either or both houses, the Arachthus, um, both houses are known as joint committees. Um, and in certain cases, actually, committees may seek to compel attendance. So um, whether attendance is appropriate in any particular case depends on terms of reference of a committee as well as its particular powers. So each committee would have different terms of reference. Uh, setting out, I suppose, its remit in the first place. Is it appropriate that this committee look into this matter at all because of its terms of reference, or whatever the matter is? Um, and then secondly, what powers does it have? Um, because not all committees have the same powers. Um, in terms of inviting attendance or compelling attendance, uh, the committee would need under the standing orders in terms of relevance, oh, sorry, in terms of reference, um, to have the power to what's often referred to as the power to send for persons, papers, and records. And um, so if it has that power, then it has a power in principle, not only to invite you to attend, but to compel you to attend, um, provided it also obtains the consent of the relevant committee on procedure. So the two steps to it, you need to have the power in the first place. And secondly, you need to have the consent of the committee on procedure, or in the case of a, a joint uh, Arathas committee, the, the respective committees on procedure uh, to compel a witness to attend. Um, in, in Again, just to mention the example that you referred to, the Mother and Baby Homes Commission, in that case, uh, there have been calls for a voluntary attendance. So I'm assuming that that committee doesn't have the, the power to compel. Um, and uh, a witness can then, of course, attend or not attend, if, it's, if, sorry, if the witness invited, it's a purely voluntary matter um, and they're entitled to attend or not to attend. Um, but even if they do attend, they can provide as little or as much cooperation and information as they wish because their attendance is purely voluntary and it's on their terms. Um, often uh, in either the case of compelled or voluntary attendance at a, an Arathis committee meeting, um, the witness is invited in any event to provide a written statement uh, of, I suppose, their core evidence to the committee. Um, and in the case of the Mother and Baby Homes Commission, I note that the chairperson of the commission, whilst declining to attend, uh, did provide quite a detailed letter or statement, if you will, to the committee. Um, and setting out, I suppose, a number of responses um, of the commission 
to the issues that have been rehearsed publicly with regard to the commission and how it carried out its work. So perhaps there's a compromise there. Perhaps this is this could be seen as kind of a, in effect, the kind of written statements that the members of the commission might have given uh, to the committee had they felt it appropriate to attend, um, but nevertheless providing some assistance with regard to, uh, in as appropriate a way as possible, um, to the committee, uh, notwithstanding the fact that they feel it's inappropriate to attend. For further video insights, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for further updates and articles in relation to public regulatory and investigation matters, please visit our website.